Hidden on you is a world you have never seen. Overrun with bizarre creatures that live on and in every part of your body. It's an animal. It's on your face and we don't know very much about it. Yet they are affecting us in ways we never imagined. But now, for the first time, we can explore this unknown world. They're an absolutely essential component of uh, what we are. This is a struggle of life and death. If we got rid of all the microbes on us and inside us, we would die. So doctors are even reintroducing bugs into our bodies. The larvae are alive. They're going through the skin. It's duty plus the point. <laughs> you are more than human. Each and every one of us is a collection of different life forms that call us home. This is life on us. You are mostly not you. Come on. You are home to an astounding array of life forms. Some creatures hide inside your bowels. Others prefer the view from your eyebrows. There are gardens of fungi on your feet. Alien tribes inhabit the jungle of your hair. Tiny mites burrow into your face. And you host more bacteria than there are stars in the Milky Way. You and your bugs form a web of life. In fact, bugs are us. Every day, this typical family is home to a hundred trillion hitchhikers. On their skin and inside their body. These invisible colonizers keep them healthy, sometimes make them ill. And even influence their behavior. Stop fighting! Yet, until recently, we understood very little about our microscopic residents. Germs have a bad reputation. We think of them as the cause of disease, but paradoxically, we couldn't survive without them. We have a tunnel vision. Bacteria are bad, the Archaeans are bad, all this stuff growing on me is bad, let's just nuke it. You know, the majority of those organisms are actually good for us. They're assisting us, they're not our enemies. Our obsession with bad bugs left us blind to the good. But now genetic tools allow us to see what we've been missing. Molecular tools, sequencing DNA, have allowed us to get a true picture of what organisms are there. And there's a far richer picture than we had previously um, appreciated via culturing microorganisms. By decoding the genes of these microscopic creatures, we can reveal a new microbial world. The genetic tools are kind of like the new telescope. Think of it as a geographer that might have just been studying the fjords around Norway their whole career. And then somebody says, oh, by the way, we just discovered the Americas and Australia, and nobody had ever heard of it before. For the first time, we can see the microbes that live on us and inside us. It's a bit like a gold rush at the moment. It really is a very thrilling thing. Scientists have embarked on a journey into the unexplored world of our own body. They are discovering how we are all shaped and kept alive by the bugs that live on us. As the crust covers planet Earth, the skin covers the body, an impermeable barrier between us and invading germs. But we only realize just how important it is when it's compromised. 
I see people's lives changed in an instant on a daily basis. But that tissue on the corner, right, is not going to stay. Fiona Wood is a world-leading burn specialist. Her struggle to save lives is all about beating pathogens, the microbes that cause infections. We have bacteria and pathogens all over us all the time. When you have a breach in your skin, there's a way in. And that way in is going to be there until we seal the wound. So the longer the wound is, uh, is open, the greater the risk of getting infected. So what we want to do is close that surface, seal the surface of the wound as quickly as possible while the waves of infection keep coming over. If you're waterproof, you will survive. And central to that survival is the layer of microbes that live on our skin. Like the atmosphere that protects our planet, our microbes form a shield against alien invaders. If some pathogen arrives on your skin, it's not your immune system that rises up to greet it. The first thing that greets it is this microbial layer, this, this hairy, invisible cloak. But where do these bugs come from? The answer lies in the miracle of birth. For the baby, the womb is a solitary world. But outside, an army of microbes awaits its arrival. The moment you're born, you're colonized with your mother's microbes. Until then, you can be called 100% human. But after that moment, you're really just 10% human and 90% microbes. Which, as a scientist, is very, very exciting. But as a parent, is terrifying. Towards the end of pregnancy, the bacteria that live in the mother's gut migrate to the vagina ready for the baby to pick them up as it slides through the birth canal. Being covered in vaginal microbes may not seem much of a treat, but it's a gift that lasts a lifetime. These bugs not only protect us from infections, they're essential for our overall health. They also have an important role in regulating the immune system. The immune system never rests. Its cells constantly patrol our bodies to eliminate pathogens. But this power can also be dangerous. It can potentially damage your own tissues, and therefore it must be controlled, it must be turned down, it must be regulated. The immune system has an internal police force, keeping it under constant surveillance. If you don't have a properly regulated immune system, it becomes trigger happy. It's attacking people's brains, it's attacking people's joints and giving them arthritis. Or it's attacking the contents of the gut and then you have inflammatory bowel disease. Or it's attacking trivial quantities of pollen or dog dandruff or whatever in the air. And that gives you allergic airway disorders. And what keeps our immune system in check is our microbes. So that if you have that organism in the gut, you have more, more policemen, more regulation, more control of the immune system so it doesn't get trigger happy and do crazy things. The supply of these microbial regulators doesn't stop at birth. The mother continues to deliver hundreds of species of bacteria in her breast milk. And it's only very recently that it's become clear that breast milk comes with a whole suite of microbes that have moved up through the mother's body, through the lymph, into the milk, and come as part of what, what goes into the baby with the breast milk. Breast milk also contains sugars that the infant can't digest. These are like fertilizer for the baby's rapidly developing gut flora. 
And the breast milk becomes this really amazing example of the way in which our bodies actually evolved to, to help these microbes to the next generation. By the time a child is two and a half, it will have developed a fully mature microscopic community. Collectively, they're known as a microbiome. They're as much a part of us as any of our own organs. We shouldn't think of them as a scary part of our, uh, our machinery. They're, they're an absolutely essential component of uh, what we are. Every one of us is a finely tuned society of many different life forms, relying on one another for survival. But we're only just beginning to discover new species in the most unexpected places. This little bug could determine your health. The Earth holds some spectacular habitats. And some retain their mystery. But we know much less about the ecosystems of our own body. Parts of the body are wet. Others are dry. Some are hot and dark. Others are cold and exposed to light. We are a world of different climate zones. And just as on Earth, on the human body too, life adapts to the environment. I started work in tropical forests, and every process I could study in a tropical forest is happening on my body and your body right now. You have species that are plants. You have species that eat those plants, and you have species that eat those species. You have species that are predators. You have species that are parasites. There's active competition, just the way that tree roots grow against tree roots, or ant colonies grow against ant colonies. That same thing is happening. Rob Dunn's background in ecology prepared him well for an exploration of the wildlife of our bodies. And one of the most intriguing places is the mysterious valley of smell, the armpit. The armpit's this weird thing. So why does it have hair? Why does it smell funny? What on earth is going on with it? Because it's a pretty specialized environment. It has high humidity levels and there's human apocrine glands. And these are glands that don't really produce sweat. They produce what I and other people think is actually a food for microbes. It is an odorless food and is released an incredible density out of your armpit. Armpits in and of themselves have no odor. Your hair has no odor. Most of your body has no odor. Those odors are all microbial. Bacteria thrive on the perspiration released by our apocrine glands. But they aren't active until we reach puberty, which is why babies smell sweet. But teenagers don't. So why are we feeding microbes in our armpits? We have hints 